read this, I read this scripture to the worship team before because I feel like the Lord put it on my heart after I picked out these songs, after he gave me these songs. And it's Romans 12, 1. And it says, Dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. And other translations say, this is your reasonable service. This is your logical service. The God that we're singing to, I don't know about you. I mean, I'm believing you've had an encounter with him because you're here tonight on a Wednesday before the 4th of July when most people are out of town doing their own thing. So obviously you've had some type of experience with the Lord. He's done something for you to bring you here tonight, right? And because of what he's done for me, I should willingly offer up my life as a living sacrifice to whatever he wants me to do. If he wants me to move to a different state, if he wants me to move from my family, then I'm gonna say yes, Lord, because my life, it's, it's yours. After everything that you've done for me, I'm gonna lay it all down before you right now. And look, there are areas in our life that we have to lay down over and over again because I'm a planner. I feel like my day belongs to me. I plan every minute to the, to the last minute but God wants to interrupt my day. My day should belong to him if he wants me to not, not clean the house like I should right now and he wants me to go devote myself to prayer. I should do that because of everything that he's done for me. He saved me from a life of confusion. He's restored my identity. He's restored my joy. He's healed me from anxiety and I know he's done things for you in this place. And so I just encourage you as we sing this, we're gonna sing the chorus again. Give him everything tonight. Whatever he's put his finger on right now, just by me speaking, whatever it is that you know I haven't, I haven't turned that part of my life over, I encourage you as we sing this that you would just offer up everything because he's worthy of the sacrifice.
nothing else is you started tonight um I just want to I want Joe to stand up I didn't I didn't tell him I'm gonna do this but I want Joe to stand up he wasn't here um I know I missed him Sunday but man I want us to have a heart like Job before I say anything else I just want to say thank you bro he wasn't here on Sunday he usually gathers the guys for prayer um he wasn't here Sunday so I think Pastor Zach was doing it and we were all late running everywhere didn't know what to do but usually when Joe's here, we're all on time. We're all in there. And so that's the first thing that I'm grateful for. Um, literally, as soon as he walked in today, he noticed that uh, that jug out there didn't have any cups in it. Filled, it. filled it with cups. And another thing is on Sundays, you, we have to take the trash out so, we can, uh, so it can get picked up on Monday morning. And so um, I had to do that. And there's just so many other things. I was talking to some of the guys about it, but I'm just so grateful for Joe and I just want us to be more like Joe, serving the church, serving the people, what Cole was talking about. So I just wanted to start with that. So amen. 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 I'm excited to preach tonight. Um, of course, I'm a little nervous. I always get nervous. Um, man, I'm, I'm just so grateful and so excited to be here. It's, I just, I can't explain it to you guys. The Lord's done so much in my life. I'm not worthy of being up here preaching to y'all, but I am, thanks to the Lord. And so I just want y'all to know that I'm up here, like, super grateful. It's a privilege. 
There's no pride in it whatsoever, I promise you. I'd rather not be up here at all. Like, and and that in a, in a good way, really, because like, I'm, I'm, like with my friends, I can talk to everybody. I can talk to my wife. I can talk to everybody in 180. I can be crazy, but in here it's just different. I'm telling y'all guys, but I'm just I'm grateful that I can do this. I know that the Lord's called me to be a pastor in the Spanish ministry. I know I've preached in here before, so I'm just so grateful to be here. Um, just real quick, I, I didn't know I was going to share this, but I started coming here when I was 12 years old, and I'm really, I'm really emotional, guys, so y'all stick with me, okay? I started coming here when I was 12 years old, and I just want y'all to raise your hand real quick. If the first time y'all came here, y'all felt the love, if y'all felt the love from the pastors, from anybody in this place, right? Amen. That's almost everybody in here. That's everybody in here felt that love as a 12-year-old kid. Man, I appreciate that so much, not getting that much love at home, not having that around, you know, um, just them accepting me. I know that everybody feels that way. Everybody feels accepted in this church, and it's because they, we, have, we, we have the presence of God in this place. The presence of God is here, and they can share that love that God showed them. They show it to us, and I'm just so grateful for that. I started coming here when I was 12, and I've been on and off. I was on and off until about my junior year of high school. Me and my wife, Jazz, started uh, we got committed. We got committed. We started coming. Um, and just ever since, the Lord put a calling on my heart to, to be a minister. Um, I didn't know where that was going to be. And then a couple years later, Zach said, hey, we want to start a Spanish ministry. And so now we're here. We're almost a year in, pretty close to a year. We're getting close to a year on our Spanish ministry. It's growing. The Lord's just been on our side through it all. So I'm just so grateful. And I want to tell you all that tonight because if the Lord can do it for me, he can do it for you all guys. You don't, it doesn't, you don't have to be 12 years old to start. You don't have to be 20 years old to start. You can be 50, 60, however old it is. It's never too late to start. So I just want to encourage you all with that tonight. The Lord has a plan for every single one of us. I know I shared it last time I did announcements, but he really does. And if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. Amen? Amen. All right. Let's, let's get started tonight. Amen? We're going to start in Luke chapter 8 tonight. If you all could turn there with me. Luke chapter 8, verse 4. I know the guys have it up there. Shout out to Patrick and Greg, too. They're always in the sound booth. Nobody ever sees them, but they're doing a lot behind the scenes. I told Austin I was going to call him up here, but I was just kidding, bro, wherever you are. I just wanted to make him nervous. He's back there hiding already. <laughs> Luke 8, chapter 4, or sorry, Luke 8, um, verse 4 says, one day, Jesus told a story in the form of a parable to a large crowd that had gathered from many towns to hear him. A farmer went out to plant his seed. As he scattered it across his field, some seed fell on a footpath where it was stepped on and the birds ate it. Other seed fell among rocks. It began to grow, but the plant soon wilted and died from lack of moisture. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up with it and choked out the tender plants. Still, other seed fell on fertile soil. This seed grew and produced a crop that was a hundred times as much as had been planted. When he had said this, he called out, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. I'm going to stop right there. Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so grateful for you. We love you and thank you for today, Jesus. Thank you for everybody that's here, Lord. You know every single person that's in this place, Jesus. You know who was going to be here tonight. You know who needed to hear this word, Jesus. I just pray, Holy Spirit. That you say everything that, and not me, Lord. I'm so grateful. Thank you for everyone that's here, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So the title of my message tonight is, Where is Your Seed Planted? So I, was, uh, I preached at church camp about um, Jesus anointing a sinful woman a couple, a couple uh, chapter, uh, one chapter before. And I thought that's what I was going to preach about tonight. I, uh, it was awesome. The kids, I mean, church camp was awesome. Y'all heard about it. And I thought that's what I was going to preach about tonight, but that's what Omar wanted to preach about. The Lord wanted to preach about this tonight. And so, um, like I said, the title of my message is, Where is Your Seed Planted? So as, as we're reading, I read that little part, and Jesus shows us four. There's four things tonight that I want to talk about. Jesus shows us four seeds. There's a seed on the footpath. There's a seed among the rocks. And there's a seed among the thorns. And there's a seed on fertile soil. And I want, to, I want, to, I want us to to evaluate ourselves tonight. I want us to be transparent with ourselves. I want us to be real because I had to be real with myself on this. This, this message was spoken to me before it was spoken to y'all guys. And I want us to be transparent tonight. Where is our seed planted? 
So I'm going to go through. We're going to start with the first one. The first one is the seed on the footpath. So if we keep on reading in chapter 8, um, this is going to be a lot of reading, so y'all stick with me. But if we keep reading on chapter 8, he goes through and, and tells us the meaning of the parables. So, so the first seed is the seed on the footpath. It says that the seed on the footpath, he tells us what it represents. It's the people that hear the message only to have the devil take it from their hearts and prevent them from believing and being saved. So it's the one that gets stepped on and eaten by birds, like he says. It's that seed that just goes, that the farmer accidentally drops and just goes on the footpath, right? What happens? The bird comes up, takes it. Who's the bird? The enemy, the devil. So what I, wanna, what I wanted to share with you all tonight on that is the devil's going to, there's, there's, let me say this. There's a lot of us tonight in here that have maybe um, been coming to church a couple of times. Um, maybe y'all have been here many times and y'all really just never accepted um, the Lord's message. Because it says that the, the seed is God's word. So that's what the seed represents tonight. So where are we planting our seed? Where are we, where are we planting God's word? Are we, are, we just letting, are we the ones that are on the footpath where that seed just accidentally drops and that bird comes in and takes it out? What does that represent? That bird, that bird like I said, is the devil. And so what I, wanna, what I wanted to sh- uh, share with you all tonight is that the, en- the enemy is going to try to throw lies at you. You hear the word for the first time. You haven't accepted the word yet. The enemy comes up, starts telling you lies. Why are you here tonight? You shouldn't even have come tonight. You're not worthy tonight. God's not sharing anything with you tonight. Why are you even here? Maybe that's somebody in here tonight. Maybe the devil's throwing lies at you, trying to pick you up off that footpath. Maybe that's you tonight. Haven't accepted God's word. Those that haven't accepted Jesus Christ into their heart as their Lord and Savior, that's where your seed's at right now, maybe, tonight. But it doesn't have to stay that way, amen? Amen. Let's keep on going to seed number two. Seed number two is the seed, seed among the rocks. Let's read it over here. I didn't read the first one, but it's Luke chapter 8. Second seed starts on uh, verse 13. It says, The seeds on the rocky soil represent those who hear the message and receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they believe it for a while, and then they fall when they face temptation. I feel like this is one where a lot of us are, right? We don't have deep roots in, in Jesus. We're not rooted in Christ, right? Um, I have an example for y'all that the Lord showed me while, uh, during worship. So I was thinking about, man, like what, i got, I got to go in more detail on these. And the Lord showed me this. When we bought our house, there was these ugly plants. There's probably 20 of them. I don't know what they were. Do you know what they're called? I don't know. There's some ugly plants that I didn't like. And so we took the fence down, took those plants down, and I thought I pulled every, all 20 of them up, right? A couple weeks later, like 15 plants came back. And I'm not kidding. I've done it three times, and I'm about to do it my fourth because there's still two plants in my yard that I haven't completely uprooted, right? But I wanted to share that with you all tonight because when, when we're rooted in Christ and the enemy comes in and attacks us, fills us with those lies when, we're, when there's just so many things going on in our life we can't focus on, on our relationship with Christ because there's a situation, because there's a money situation, because whatever it is, all these situations in our life, the enemy comes and cuts us off, right? But guess what? We're rooted in Christ and we're coming back. We don't have to stay that way. We, we can be rooted in Christ, but what's the opposite of that? When the enemy comes and takes that plan away and there's no roots, then what? It's gone, Right? That's why it says it's, it's on those rocks. That's the, that's the plant that's on the rocks, the seed that's on the rocks, because there's no foundation. There's no, there's no root there. I've, I've, preached, I've preached about it before, Jesus being our firm foundation. When we build our house on the rock and the storms come, we're good, right? Everything's okay, but when we, pl- when we build our house on the sand, what happens? Our house tears down, right? Because we don't have a firm foundation. we got to have a firm foundation tonight. If you're one of those seeds that's on the rocks tonight, that can change. Amen? Amen. It doesn't have to stay that way. It says, it began to grow, but plant soon wilted and died from lack of moisture. So another thing with that, I love that because what happens? We're not rooted. We can't get enough water and we die. We will because there's no, we're not feeding it. So how do we feed our relationship with God? In the word. We stay in the word. We keep coming to church. Even when the enemy throws lies at you and makes you think that, um, I don't know, just whatever it is, makes you think you're not good enough to come, makes you think that you shouldn't come tonight because you can come on Sunday, because they're busy on Wednesday, right? Right? He can throw all those lies, and we just have to keep watering it. I'm sorry, I lost track. 
But we, we have to keep on watering it and we have to stay focused on it because if it's not, that seed's not going to grow. There's not going to be life. There's not going to be fruit on that seed. Amen? Amen. Um, another thing I wrote down on this one is a relationship based off feelings. When we're based off feelings, it's just there's, there's no root there. We're just here because we get that church high on Wednesday, get that church high on Sunday morning, and then guess what? We go back home and what? There's no fruit in our life. Like Cole was saying, we go and there's not even a light there. There's not even a light to cover with the basket because we haven't been in because there's not really a relationship. It's just feelings. Amen? I've been there before. I'm talking to myself. Coming to church because I have to. Because I'm one of the pastors. Coming to church because I'm one of the 180 leaders. Because they're going to ask me where I'm at if I don't show up. I've been there where I'm not rooted. Amen? I've been there before. We've all been there before. Maybe you're there right now. I'm going to read this to y'all. Let's, let's go to Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. I'll just go ahead and read it. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 says, And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow Him. Let your roots grow down into Him and let your lives be built on Him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. There it is. When we're rooted in Christ, our lives will change forever. When, it, when it's a real relationship with Christ, it can change forever. Amen? We don't have to be that seed that just grows on the rock and wilts and dies because we, it's not watered, because we're not rooted. We can be rooted in Christ tonight. We can be strong in our faith tonight. We can build on that firm foundation tonight. Amen? Amen. It says, um, so when Jesus explains that second seed, it says it's those who hear the message, receive it with joy, but since they don't have deep roots, they believe for a while, then fall away when they face temptation. When those temptations come, when that alcohol comes back up, when that weed comes back up, when, the, when those, all those addictions, when that pornography comes back up, what are we running to? Are we running back to the Lord? Are we running back to ourselves, feeling guilty, not caring about what's going on with our relationship with Christ? What are we doing? Are we, running back, are we running back to him tonight? Let's move, on to the, let's move on to the third seed tonight. There's four. We're almost done. The third seed, seed among the thorns. I'm, let's read it in Luke chapter 8. This one starts in verse 14. The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear the message, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and so they never grow in maturity. Ooh, this is a good one right here. Those who, this, is what, this is how he explains it when he explains a parable. Those who hear the message receive it with joy, but since they don't have deep roots, they believe for what? Oh, I'm sorry. That's the, that's the second one. <laughs> this is the third one. Let me slow down. This is the third one. Those who hear the message, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by cares and riches and pleasures of life, and so they never grow into maturity. All the other things come into our life. Those thorns start to come in. I was cutting some trees out of my boss's land today, and I grabbed some thorns, and I was so mad. Like, and so what does that represent? I'm saying that because what, what does that represent? It shows those things that we hate, those things that we don't like that come up. Those sports, when we put stuff before Christ, those sports, playing golf. I'm telling you, I just got into golf, and I want to play it every day. <laughs> but that can, that, can get a, that can get ahead of my relationship with Christ. That can get in front of everything, of my relationship with my family, with Christ, that's just one thing. Riches, money, that's another one. Look, money is a great thing. Amen? <laughs> money is awesome. But when you put it before, the love of money is not awesome. That's when, the, that's when it starts to change. When you put that before your relationship with Christ, when that takes over your relationship with Christ, that's when there begins to be a problem. When we start putting all these other things before, before our relationship. Um, what's our main focus? I wrote that down for this third seed. What's our main focus on this? on our relationship with Christ. In our life in general, what's our main focus? Is it our job? Is it our family? Is it our hobbies? What is it? Or is it Christ? This third seed, your main focus isn't, your main focus isn't Christ if you're this third seed. If those thorns have come up, if those things have come up in your life and taken over your relationship with Christ, where your relationship isn't even there anymore, where you've focused on, on, your, on your hobbies where you've done that more than going to church, where you, where you go do your hobbies on Wednesdays instead of coming to church, where you just go relax on Sundays instead of coming to church because it's another rest day. What have we done? 
Where, where, where are we? If you're on that third seed, where, what's your main focus? What are we letting in? How, how, what started those thorns? There had, to be a, there, there had to be a seed planted for those thorns to come up. So we had to start something with that, right? We had to start something there for that to start taking over our relationship with Christ. It starts with the small thing, like golf, like getting a new job because you need more money, but you didn't pray about that job. You took it yourself. I've done that before. I've taken a job that the Lord didn't call me to. And guess what? It was terrible. I hated it. I was depressed. But I was making good money. But guess what? I wasn't tithing, so it was going away anyway. <laughs> but what, what, what are we planting around our, our seed? Is it those thorns? What are we putting up? What are we putting down so that that can come up and choke, choke our relationship with Christ away? To take our relationship with Christ away, right? I have a verse for that one as well. We're going to go back to Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 10. This is my favorite verse in the whole Bible. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. We're about to read it, but we're starting in verse 1. It says, Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with the Christ and God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So put to death the sinful, earthly, lurking things within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, idolater worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world, but now is the time to get rid of the anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and, it, and all its wicked deeds. Here's my favorite verse. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become more like Him. Right? So maybe there is thorns around our, our, our harvest right now. Maybe there's thorns around our life right now, but guess what? There's hope. Why? Because Jesus put to death our sinful nature. We don't have to live in that anymore. We don't have to be in that sin. We don't have to live that life anymore because Jesus died for us. Jesus put to death that sinful nature so that we can have a new hope, a new life, so that we can have peace, so that we can have joy, so that we don't have to be angry, so that we don't have to be depressed, so that we don't have to have anxiety, but can have joy even when things are going bad because we're on that firm foundation. Amen? Amen. So if you're on that seed tonight, we can put to death those sinful natures. We don't have to live in that. Amen? Amen. Put on your new nature. We can put on our new nature tonight and be renewed. Learn to know our Creator and become more like Him. And the last seed, the one I want to be like, seed on fertile soil. So this is the seed, on, the, the, this, this is the seed that grew on the fertile soil. It's the perfect one. Let's read it. I wasn't going to read it. Luke chapter 8. Back to Luke chapter 8. This is the last seed, starting on verse 15. And the seeds that fell on the good soil represent honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently produce a huge harvest. harvest. Then he goes on and it says it represents... These represent honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently produce a huge harvest. The ones who, are, who aren't just on the footpath where the enemy can come and take them. It's not them. It's not the ones who are on, on the rocks that aren't deep-rooted. It's not them. It's not the one among the thorns. thorns. It's the one rooted in Christ. It's the one with the firm foundation. It's the one with the, that has the peace that has the joy because they've given it all to the Lord. They've let, they've let Jesus be their focus and not anything else. They've focused on Him more than anything. Even when the enemy is trying to come, even when that bird's trying to come and take the seed, guess what? They're on that fertile soil. They're down below. They're rooted down with Christ. They don't have to worry about that. Yes, I'm telling y'all guys, I'm not preaching to y'all that your life's going to be perfect when you're planted on that fertile soil and everything's going to be good. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that there can be peace that there can be joy, supernatural peace, supernatural joy. You can have everything you, all you've ever, let me put it this way. I'll just tell y'all. I'm not up here telling y'all that. I had a terrible, like, I had a terrible childhood. I was like, my life was terrible because my mom was awesome. My mom raised me and she was an awesome woman. But I'll tell y'all this. 
when I gave my heart to the Lord, really, like I told you on my junior year in high school, when I really focused on Him, when I was really deep rooted in Him, when I set my foundation on Him, when I gave Him all my, all my, uh, my addictions, the pornography, the alcohol, the weed, all my addictions, when I gave Him my past, when I said, Jesus, You died for that. I don't have to worry about it anymore. When I let down all that, the peace came, the joy came. I became a different man. I became a man of God, not a perfect man because I still fail. Nobody's perfect. There's only one perfect person. But I'm telling you, Jesus can do. Jesus can do it all. There's nothing that he can't do. And I'm a perfect, I'm a perfect example of that. And when we're, when we're, when, when that seed is planted on that fertile soil, it doesn't only change you. But it changes generations and generations ahead of you. Man, I know, most of y'all know my baby boy, Mateo. I love that boy to death. And the Bible Bible promises me that if I'm deeply rooted in Christ, that if I have a relationship with him, that for generations my son's going to have a relationship with him. My grandkids are going to have a relationship with him. And that's just not for me. That's for, that's for everybody in here. For your grandkids. For your kids. For their kids. It just keeps going for generations. Why? Because you decided to make the change. Because you decided to be rooted deep in Christ. Because you decided to keep watering that seed. Because you decided to keep reading your word even when you didn't feel like it. Maybe you're here today and you don't feel like it. But I'm glad that you're here today because maybe you needed to hear this word. Maybe you just need to be in the presence of God tonight because I'm telling you guys, when you're in his presence, you will know it and you will notice a change in your lives. And I understand that you can't just go home and and change these seeds around and put it on that fertile soil because what's planted, it has to come up. What we've planted has to come up, and, and sometimes that's difficult. That can be difficult, right? There's addictions that have to come up. Our past has to come up. The relationships that you don't like, they have to come up. They have to be soft, but they can be gone. That addiction can be gone. That relationship can be healed. You don't have to be addicted. Your kids don't have to be addicted. I'm telling y'all guys, you can be the difference for your family. My dad, I love my dad so much. He's not in church yet. Noticed how I said yet because I know he's coming. But I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, I'm talking to y'all about my dad tonight because when I gave my heart to the Lord, mine and his relationship changed. The The circumstances didn't change. They didn't change at all. They're getting better now, thank God. They are now. But when I first when I first gave my heart to the Lord, the circumstances didn't change. Nothing changed. But my heart for Him changed. Supernaturally. I'm telling y'all guys, He can do that for you. If He can do that for me, He can do that for you. Where is our seed planted tonight? We're not going to be perfect, but we can put it on that fertile soil. We can change that tonight. We can give it all to God tonight. I want to produce that crop for my family, for my friends around me. I want to be the difference. Thank you, Jesus. What are we doing with God's Word? What have we been doing with God's Word? Have we just been coming to church every Wednesday and Sunday and just going through the motions, not really caring for it at all, just being here, hearing the word, letting it be on that footpath so that the devil can come and take it? Have we done anything with that seed tonight? Is it in thorns tonight? Is is there no foundation in it tonight? We can change the placement of our seed tonight, no matter where you've planted it. I know I asked y'all that. Where's your seed planted? That's important. But what's more important is, where are you going to plant it now? 
What are you going to do with it now? Are you going to change it? Are you going to make a difference? Are you going to keep watering that plant? Are you going to keep staying focused on the Word? Because this is an everyday, this is an everyday uh, decision that you have to make. This isn't just, I'm going to move my seed to this fertile soil. I'm going to start reading the Word. I'm going to start focusing on my relationship with Jesus. I'm going to put Him first. It's not just a one-day thing. Because I promise you all, my relationship with Jesus isn't perfect. There's ups and downs. I fail a lot. I'm human. We fail a lot. We're human. But when our heart is in the right place, when we're all in for Christ, when our heart is all in, and He sees that, there will be a change. There will be a change. I promise you. Look at me. I'm telling you. My buddy Bland is here. I didn't tell him I was going to point him out, but I was friends with him in high school. He knows me from high school. And he knows me now. Your seed can change tonight. It doesn't matter how old you are, guys. There's, I'm telling you. I know, I know you look at me and say, oh, he's, he's, a, young, he's a young one. He's a young buck. <laughs> he's a young, I don't know why I said young buck. I never say that. <laughs> I'll tell you why. It's because I looked at this man right here. He would probably say that to me, so. It's your fault, bro. I would never say young buck. <laughs> but you're probably looking at me and saying, he's a young kid. He, he just hasn't gone through life yet. You're right. But what I have gone through, I know that the Lord has changed. And the Bible promises change if you give your whole heart to Him. If you set your life down before Him, He promises change. Are things going to be perfect? No. It's not going to be perfect. But you have one beside you who is perfect, who will be with you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm not sure if we have enough for a worship team. I don't think we do, but I know they can play music tonight. So I want to do an altar call tonight. I know that that's all the Lord has given me. Where's your seed planted at tonight? I want to do an altar call. To get our relationship with the Lord on the right path. Not on that footpath. Not in the rocks. Not in the thorns. But in that fertile soil where it's supposed to be, where He wants us to be. I'm telling you guys, nobody in here is too far gone. I always, my whole life growing up, coming to church, I thought I was too far gone. There's no way he can fix me. There's no way. But you're not too far gone. The Lord's right there behind you just waiting for you to turn around. He's at that door waiting for you to open it, to come in with open arms for every single one of us tonight. It doesn't matter what it looks like. We can change the circumstance. So I just want to do an altar call. They're going to play music. If y'all guys would please stand. I know it wasn't a long message, but I know it's what I needed to hear this week. Let's change where our seed is growing. Let's turn it around. Let's put it on that fertile soil tonight. Not just tonight, but for the rest of the week, for the rest of the month, making that decision every single day. Jesus, I'm going to live for you. Jesus, I'm going to go to you. Jesus, for with all my problems, with all my addictions, with my marriage, I give you my marriage, Jesus. I give you my kids, Jesus. I give it all, Lord. I give you my whole heart. So I just want to open up the altars tonight. They're going to play music. Hopefully that, they got it. Yeah, they're going to play music. He's looking at me saying yes. Yeah, so I just want us to be transparent tonight. You don't have to come tell me anything. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying be transparent to the Lord. He knows. He knows where you're at right now. But he wants you to be on that fertile soil tonight. He wants you to be closer to him tonight. So we're going to open up the altars. If you need prayer, we're here. There's, there's some of the leaders here. We'll pray for you.